Hey y'all, it's Aurelius, hope you've been well. In this video, I am doing something a little different and fun, and that is to showcase some of my everyday gear and tech that I use to do things like record these YouTube videos, even down to the clothing that I wear, such as this t-shirt and the cap. I'll list down all these items in the description box below, so you can go ahead, check those out, and purchase them if you wish to do so. This video is sponsored by Mercury by Stream Elements. All right, so before we get into the tech and nerdy stuff, let's run through some of the clothing items that I wear, starting with this cap. Now, first of all, the reason why I wear a cap in the first place is because, you know, I work from home and I don't wanna have to spend time doing my hair. And for me, it's all about efficiency. I wanna just get up and go start recording. And of course, I'm a male, so it's easier just to put a cap on. But for females, it may, may be, of course, harder because you might wanna put makeup on. But this is why I wear a cap. I get bad hair days, just like today. So easiest thing to do is to wear a cap. And this one is a classic, you know, black always looks good. And this model is called uh, the FlexFit uh, Delta. So FlexFit creates, uh, you know, they create a whole bunch of caps, but I like this one in particular. I purchased, you know, I'm a kind of a cap person, so I've got a whole collection of caps. But by far, this is the best cap that I've ever worn, tried and used because it lasts a long time. I'm an easy sweater and FlexFit created this patented kind of technology so that this sweatband, you know, is able to wick, you know, the moisture easy and it doesn't leave any odors. I love it so much that I bought two. But one thing I would say is that the sizing is not that great. Now, the one I'm wearing right now is a SM, S slash M, which is a small to medium. And the one I bought as well, the second one is a large to extra large. So what they are missing is a medium to large, which would be the perfect size for my head. I'm not sure why they don't offer a medium to large. Hopefully in the future they will, but I looked online, but they still don't manufacture a medium to large. All right, the next item on this list is my t-shirt. I almost always wear a black t-shirt. You will see in all of my previous videos that I wear a black t-shirt. Sometimes I do uh, rotate it between a darker gray, charcoal colored uh, t-shirt, but the brand that I buy is this one right here. So it's the Uniqlo uh, t-shirt. Usually it is the 100% cotton Supima uh, t-shirt that I wear, but during summer, which is what it is right now in the Southern Hemisphere, I wear the Aerism uh, version. Right now, I am using an Aerism t-shirt, so this is what it looks like. Uh, but I really love Uniqlo's t-shirts because they last long. Even after multiple washes, it doesn't shrink. And I even put it in the dryer without shrinkage and it maintains and I just love you know, using black because it's classic. I don't need to worry about any stains. But that's that, that's my everyday preferred t-shirt that I like to wear, not just on camera, but even going out. All right, the next item on this list is this minimalist wallet from Magpul. I bought this from Amazon for about $25 or so. I'll list it in the description box below as mentioned, but I really love this because it only pretty much can carry your most essential cards. Three to five cards is what they state on their website. But I've comfortably added about four cards at the front and then I can add pretty much like two or three extra cards. But I use the back just to add uh, some notes. Most of the time I don't need to carry my wallet since we've got everything on our smartphones. But I really love this wallet because it's really slim and durable. I hardly notice it when I put it in my pocket, whether it's in the back or the front, but for about 25 US dollars, you can't go wrong with this. Next up on this list is my phone case. And this one's from Quadlock. I really love this because it's got this patented kind of back where you can lock, it's got a locking system. And I also purchased the stand for it so I can put it right in front where my monitor is sitting. And all you need to do is to simply lock it like so, and you've got kind of a second screen if you want to use that, or you can just use it so you can see it right there next to your monitor. But I also have the car mount as well, and it uses the same locking system and it won't move, unlike some of the magnetic ones, which is what I used to use, and the ones that have the kind of retractable uh, mounts, right? Uh, this one really works well and you can also buy the ring so that you can pretty much stand your phone right here or wherever you want if you're watching something like a YouTube video or you're reading something. I also like that it is quite low profile, it's not bulky and it fits well on my iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max. 
Speaking of phones, the next item on this list is my phone. And as I mentioned, it is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. I haven't upgraded to the latest version. I don't feel like I need to just yet. This one does just fine. Takes really professional photos, which is what I like and videos sometimes too. And I like to record in 4K so that I can refer back, you know, let's say in the future and I've got 4K footage. Before I move ahead, I want to mention this video's sponsor, Mercury by Stream Elements. Mercury by Stream Elements is the ultimate free community management tool for YouTubers. Mercury has a ton of great tools to take your content to the next level and makes it more engaging for those loyal viewers, subscribers, and members. True fact, on average, creators who use Mercury experienced a 60% increase in engagement. Mercury Shoutout Studio lets you design video assets that shout out all your latest subscribers, members, and even patrons from Patreon in less than five minutes. You can customize the design with your brand colors, selecting a primary color and the secondary color. And now you can see the changes take effect. Mercury also features dynamic video descriptions, making static video descriptions come alive with automatically updated content. For example, by going to your videos and editing one of these individual videos, here's a current video description. Let's add some dynamic widgets just right here. We'll add a subscriber goal. Let's add a subscriber link so people can simply subscribe with one click. Add a tipping link so viewers can support the channel. And let's go ahead and add a poll. You can scroll down and add a poll, but I've got mine under templates, which I created before. I'll drag and drop it right here, save changes. And if I go to my video, scroll down, you'll see the dynamic widgets right here. As I mentioned, this is a dynamic description, which means in my case, the subscriber goal and the poll will automatically update based on the latest stats. What you can also do is spotlight newest subscribers, latest tippers, newest patron supporters, or Discord members. I'm going to drag the newest subscriber widget over right here, so then I can shout out our newest subscriber. Start connecting with your audience and create that all important engagement, but don't take my word for it. Go ahead and check out Mercury by going to mercury.streamelements.com or click the link in the description box below and try it out for yourself today. Now back to the video. Now the next item on this list is actually what I'm looking at to read out my kind of outline or talking points and that is my iPad Air in combination with my Apple Pen. What I like to do is to put it on the side, sometimes out of frame so you don't see it, and I can just refer to my notes, my outline, my script. And what I also like to use my iPad for is to simply doodle, draw. If you look at some of my past thumbnails, I you can see some of the arrows that I've drawn. So those are all custom and I simply use my iPad as a display. You can sync it up with your, your iMac or your Apple, uh, your MacBook Pro, whatever. And then you run Photoshop or something like that. And then you can start doodling and then take that image and then put it on your thumbnail. I also like to use my iPad to run apps such as Blinkist and Shortform so I can read some book summaries or sometimes listen to them. The next item on this list is my main computer. I use an iMac 2020 model, 27 inch with a 10 core uh, CPU, 72 gigs of RAM. I upgraded using uh, third party RAM and because obviously on the Apple website, it is quite expensive if you upgrade the RAM and they do make available the RAM slots where you can simply install it yourself. Unfortunately, it is a 2020 model, which means it is the Intel base. I couldn't wait. I had a MacBook Pro uh, 2018 model because I do YouTube videos, I was exporting 4K videos and exporting 4K videos on that MacBook Pro at that time was taking about two to four hours sometimes and I couldn't multitask, couldn't work on any other apps except leave it to do its job. I could have waited for the latest MacBook Pro but I've got a friend who is able to give me kind of mates rates for Apple products and they don't get uh, discounts for the latest releases. Next up for the keyboard, I use an Apple Magic Keyboard with the number pad in space gray color. I haven't gotten into mechanical keyboards just because the sound can be quite annoying and I don't want to make too much sound when I'm typing. So this Apple Magic Keyboard does a trick and I really love it, really slim and low profile. In combination with the keyboard, I use an Apple trackpad as my main mouse. I retired from using a mouse or traditional mouse and this pretty much does everything. It makes it easier because I like to use things like uh, gestures and being able to simply swipe or use four fingers or squeezing or pinching, even when it comes down to uh, video editing, I use this. Uh, the problem that I had was the ergonomics of using a trackpad. I did feel a bit of, you know, carpal tunnel, you know, pain right here. 
uh, when I first used it. It took a couple of weeks, but I did add kind of a, an ergonomic kind of gel uh, pad, wrist pad, and that helped a lot. And speaking of ergonomics, I do use a specific uh, wrist support, and that is the one from uh, Delta Hub. And this one's called uh, Carpio 2.0. Here's what the Carpio looks like. I'll just show you a close up of it if you can focus. But basically it just sits right there and then it can slide, which is a great thing about it. And you need to choose between a left hand or a right hand. There's a specific uh, one for it. And on their website, they do have different sizes. So you need to make sure you get the right size. The guide that they tell you to follow is to use a credit card and if your hand or your palm, sorry, is larger than a normal size credit card, then you are a size large. So this one specifically is the black in the large and I love the packaging. If you can take a look right there, I'll just focus it. Look at that. One thing I would say about the Carpio is that in terms of the sliding, it doesn't really slide well if you have a desk mat that is uh, leather-like. There's quite a lot of friction, so it's not as smooth, especially during summer where you know, you're a little more sweaty, but that's one thing to note. And I've been using this for a couple of months already. And speaking of desk mats, the specific desk mat that I use is from Zorsin. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a PU desk mat, so it's not real leather. And the size that I have is the 90 by 40 centimeter one. But it's really affordable and I've spilled things on this desk mat and it's really easy to clean. Next up, let's talk about some of the recording equipment that I use to record my videos. Starting with the camera, the main A camera or the main camera that I'm using right now to record this video is the Sony A7C. I started using the A7C on August, 2021. Took me a while to get used to in terms of the settings, I have to admit, but I bought a course from Caleb Pike of DSLR Shooter. Really love his videos. I'll link it up in the description box below, but I bought a course from him or a guide that teaches you how to adjust your settings, more specifically for the A7 uh, III, but because the A7C and A7 III are quite identical, the settings are similar. The reason why I upgraded my camera, previously I was using a Canon M50, is because of the recording limit. With the A7C, there's no recording limit, no 30 minute recording limit. I like to record continuously, Sometimes I record up to two hours of footage. Sony, uh, the A7C has no problems recording that amount of footage. But so far, I really love the Sony A7C. And if you are looking to upgrade from an entry level camera, I do recommend this one or the latest uh, Sony a7 IV. Now coupled with the A7C, the lens that I use is from Sony as well, the Sony G Master 24 millimeter f1.4. It took me a while to justify purchasing this lens because it's one of Sony's more expensive lenses, the G Master series, but I don't regret it at all. It records really sharp videos. Now let's talk about some audio recording equipment, including the microphone. The first on this list is from Rode, and this one's the Rode Procaster. I think it's underrated, and I've had this for many years, I think up to 10 years now. And the videos that you see, the audio quality that you can hear from my screen tutorials, most, most of them came from this microphone alone. Now this isn't a USB microphone, as you can see, it's got the XLR input right there. So if you are looking for kind of an all-in-one uh, microphone where you can simply plug it in and you're ready to go, this wouldn't be the microphone. But you can simply connect this to a USB audio interface such as a Scarlett Solo, which is what I have. And then from there, that connects to your computer. For talking here videos, just like what I'm doing right here where I'm not really showing my screen, I do have a specific microphone that I use and that is the Rode NTG5, which is sitting up right here and if I'm pointing right here, I'm trying to put it as close as possible to get better quality audio. And then with the NTG5, that records to an external recorder, which is the Zoom H5, recording to an SD card. When it comes time to edit my videos, I then export the audio and then sync it up with the video. Next up, in terms of lighting, the key light or the main light that I use is from Godox, the Godox SL60W. But one thing, one flaw of it is the fan noise. You might not notice, but for me recording this, I can hear it. Sometimes the microphone picks it up, 
may be annoying, but in terms of, you know, getting rid of that, you can use things like audio processing to get rid of that background noise. But with the Godox SL60W, I do use a softbox and that is the one from Aperture. So the Aperture Light Dome 2. All right, let's talk about a couple more pieces of tech here. And the first is backup. I back up all my videos and files on a simple, you know, external hard drive. These aren't SSDs, so they're not fast. Uh, these are simple uh, four terabyte ones. The one that I get is from Toshiba, Toshiba Canvio. And this is simply a USB 3.0 one. Uh, you know, not by all means, it's not fast at all, but you know, I simply chuck any files that I don't want to keep on my main hard drive, on my computer, on my iMac. So I've got a couple of these, you know, I simply label them as 2019 to 2021 or 2022 or such. So I keep those a couple of those handy and whenever I do need to refer to a previous recording or anything else, then I simply plug it in and I've got all my files. Now, when it comes to editing my videos and monitoring the audio, I like to use my Sennheiser HD 25s. And these are the ones that DJs use and even audio engineers. And I think these go way back. And the reason why I like to use a wired uh, set of headphones is because when you're using uh, Bluetooth earbuds or headphones, there's a bit of a lag in between. So when you play your video, when you're editing, there's a bit of a lag. So you wanna make sure you're in sync. That's why it's best to use a wide set of headphones or e earbuds. On top of that, they sound great. And for lengthy periods of, let's say, listening to music and even editing, they still feel comfortable. One piece of tech that I almost miss is these wireless Bluetooth earbuds from Tautronics. I bought these from Amazon, but they no longer sell it on Amazon. I'm not sure why, but you can still buy it from their Tautronics website. But what I love about these is that it's clean. And you may have seen uh, these earbuds when I created or recorded my work with me video. I actually dropped these in a bucket of paint and I thought, they were gone, they were dead, but after cleaning it, it worked fine and no wishes there. For about $50, you know, you can't go wrong with these. Now a must have security item I highly recommend you get is a security key. And this is a Yubico, if I can get that in focus, Yubico security key. What you do with this is you can authenticate your accounts and keep it secure. It adds an extra layer, kind of like the two-factor authentication, but what you do when they do request or prompt you to authenticate yourself, what you do is you plug it in and then you simply tap the middle and then that's all you need to do. So then that way only you as the verified owner of that account, you know, can access your account. A good idea also is to get a backup one. So if you do lose one, you still have your other one. So I keep this at home in a uh, in my safe. And then this one, I like to just bring it along with me and then keep it with my keys. And last but not least is smart technology. I bought a couple of smart kind of power adapters and power strips where I can control things like my lighting and you know even the lighting behind. So I'll demonstrate and all I need to do is say something like, hey Siri, turn off all lights. And as you can see, all the lights are off except for the background right there. And now I'll turn it back on. Hey Siri, turn on all lights. It saved me a heap of time. Otherwise I'd have to go behind the key light, turn that on, then turn on the fill light, then one down the bottom and other things that I would have to spend time doing. So as I mentioned, it's all about efficiency, working smarter, and I wanna just be able to record when I want and not have to worry or have any friction in between. All right, that pretty much sums up this video on my top gear that I use on a day to day. Hope you enjoyed it and got value from it. And if you did, by all means, give this video a thumbs up and looking forward to sharing the next training with you. In the meantime, do take care.